just going to tell you up front, I love to teach. That's my lane. But um, for some reason, um, the Lord is not allowing me to teach this morning. Um, I'm more of a preacher right now. <laughs> but I am the forerunner to four other amazing women who will have a lot to share. So I am here to inspire you, motivate you, and just prepare the road for them. So assembled here today are some of the most dangerous people in the land. You are armed and dangerous. I want you to know that you are wanted and that there are warrants out for your arrest by both God and the devil. Why? Because both God and Satan know the power of a woman. If women were not of importance to God, how can we explain why a total of over a hundred and something women are named in the Bible? And some of them, even though they are not named, they are referred to. So God wants to recruit us for this end time army. And Pastor, uh, we, we, uh, in Jeremiah 51 and verse 20, I mean, he was not speaking a, about a woman there, but it says, you are my battle axe and weapons of war. For with you, I will break the nation in pieces. With you, I will destroy kingdoms. And a long time ago, that verse of scripture uh, came to me and it has meant a lot to me. Um, and sometimes when I feel as if, you know, I'm not this kind of lovey, lovey person and stuff like that. God reminds me of that verse. You are my battle axe and weapons of warfare. So the, can the thing formed ask the, the maker, why have you made me thus? So sometimes if you find I'm not as loving as my, you know who. <laughs> He's not hearing me today, so that's why. Okay. So we, we have all experienced that warring spirit rise up inside of us, especially when we are interceding in prayer for a spouse, a son or daughter, a friend whom we dearly love. We go to war on their behalf. And I have something lined up which um, Pastor Tico is going to get to in a while, but I remember so many times warring on behalf of my children, warring on behalf of my husband. Sometimes God had me do strange things. I, I would put on my daughter's clothes, and you have heard, many of you have heard her testimony as to where God has brought her from and wh where she is now. And I remember on one occasion putting on her clothing and lying on the floor and just interceding on her behalf, you know, uh, we've had situations, you, you know, sometimes you think pastors, children don't have issues, but <laughs> they have more issues many times. And many times because the congregation wants them to be perfect and feels that they have to instruct them and tell them. So they have so many parents coming at them, everybody telling them something different. And um, so that is part of the problem. But they have issues and, and, and we've had to, you know, really go into intercession on behalf of our children. So I want you to just quickly watch this, um, uh, a short video that when I came across it, I said, yep, that's true. That's true. Tico, can we get it? He says, yes. When you ask a woman to pray, women go to war. They put on their combat boots and tell the devil, you a liar. You can't have my house. You can't have my child. You can't have my children. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Get out. They start doing crazy stuff like opening up the door and say, I said, get out of this house. Just, Come on, come on, talk to me, sister. When a woman prays, I don't care if it's cancer or leukemia or whatever it is, when a woman starts praying, I don't care what the doctor says. A woman will look the doctor right in the face and say, I know a doctor that's greater than your doctor. Are there any women? When you ask a woman. Amen. <laughs> amen, amen. <laughs> so there's a strength in us. 
that God wants to harness. It is this strength that the devil has tried to beat out of so many of us. Uh, either through abuse, ridicule you out of it, doubt you out of it, frighten you out of it. But God knows that he has put this strength in us. And so uh, that scripture that uh, Pastor Francis read this morning or, or quoted, God Almighty declares the word of the gospel with power and the warring woman of Zion. Psalm 68 and verse 11 in the Passion. The warring woman of Zion deliver its message. It says it in the New Living um, Translation this way. The Lord gives the word and a great army or a host of women. It, they act, it actually says that. Or a host of women bring the good news. So I have come this morning as a recruiter in the army of the Lord. I have come to recruit you to join in the fight in what may very well be the last frontier. I have come to challenge us to take off our high heels and put on the boots of the pre preparation of the gospel of peace. To remove the weaves, the wigs, the braids, the crochet, and the highlights to put on the helmet of salvation. Amen. To trade in the Louis Vuitton for the shield of faith. Amen. The ripped jeans for the belt of truth. Amen. Our victorious secret for the breastplate of righteousness. Amen. And our social media for the sword of the spirit. Amen. I have come to recruit housewives and teachers cooks and lawyers, hairstylists and doctors, Uber drivers and female pilots, waitresses and scientists, wives, mothers, single women, young women and seniors. All of us are being called. All of us have been chosen before the universe was created for such a time as this. But will all of us answer the cry, the battle cry? Only you can tell. So sitting on a plane from London to Charlotte, I began to muse again as to what should be this, the theme for this year's AEM Women's Conference. Because since the beginning of the year, my husband had been sharing that God had told him, raise up, son, raise me up an army. So it came as no surprise to me where I heard uh, this, this, these words in my spirit, warring women. Hence our theme, raising up women warriors. Amen. So women in the Bible all, and, and throughout history have always been called upon to uh, serve in roles that are not usually uh, theirs, you know. Um, we have uh, the, the story of um, Deborah, okay? She was a prophetess, it, 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 we are told. The prophetess Deborah, she was not only uh, a prophetess, but she was a judge of the entire nation of Israel. But she also led an army of men into battle. Uh, uh, it's in uh, Judges chapter 4, verse 4 to 9. It says, Deborah, the wife of Lapidoth, was a prophet who was judging Israel at that time. She would sit under the palm of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in the hill country of Ephraim. And the Israelites would go to her for judgment. One day she sent for Barak, son of Ahinoam, who lived in Kedesh in the land of Naphtali. She said to him, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, commands you. Call out 10,000 warriors from the tribes of Naphtali and Zebulun at Mount Tabor. And I will call out Sisera, commander of Jabin's army, along with his chariots and warriors to the Kishon River. There I will give you victory over him. Barak told her, I will go but only if you go with me. Very well, she replied. He always said, that's a weak man, right? <laughs> she said, very well, she replied, I will go with you, but you will receive no honor in this venture for the Lord's victory over Sisera will be at the hands of a woman. So Deborah went with Barak to Kadesh, and we all know who that woman was. I've named my granddaughter after her by the name of Jael. 
Amen. Jael, the Bible tells us uh, that she was the one in Judges chapter, f uh, she was the one that actually was prophesied about there and she was the one that actually killed Israel's enemy. We have the account also of an unnamed woman. They didn't even give her a name, but she also, God used her uh, to, to kill Abimelech. Um, it, it, I'll just quickly read it. It says that she dropped, it, this is in Judges 9, 52 to 54 and 56. It says she dropped a millstone that landed on Abimelech's head and crushed his skull. He, Abimelech, quickly said to his young armor bearer, draw your sword and kill me. Don't let it be said that a woman, <laughs> don't let it be said that a woman killed Abimelech. So the young man ran him through with his sword and he died. In this way, God punished Abimelech for the evil he had done his father by murdering his 70 brothers. So we see here that God used a woman in a role that you would think she did not belong in, that she is not called uh, to belong in. We don't only war by intercession, but we also war by strategy. And this is what some of us need to understand, that you need to seek the strategy of the Lord for some of the battles that you are facing. There are times that God will tell you, shut your mouth, but sometimes because we feel I've got to say it, we say something that we shouldn't say. Look at Esther, okay? Esther, the whole story, I'm not going to read that for you because of time, but we have a young Jewish woman who, wore, who, who won a beauty competition that put her in a place where she could influence the king, okay? Her name is Esther. She was not a politician. She was not a lawmaker, but with wisdom and strategy, she overturned a law that was said to be legally irreversible and saved her, her whole nation and her people from certain death. So what did she use? She used strategy. She did not open her mouth and spill everything that she wanted to say once she had entry to the king's heir. In fact, in, instead she invited him to dinner, okay? And she did this twice and I know it must have been bubbling up inside of her. I want to talk, I want to, because the king kept asking her, what is it? I will give it to you even it's half the kingdom. Some one of us would have said, yeah, this is what it is. And start to talk right away because we say, oh, that's my, that's my cue. No, it wasn't her cue. She said, no, all I want you to do is come to dinner again. She knew that the way to a man's heart is through his stomach. So some of you women that don't like to cook, you better find some good food to order in before he comes home. I don't care how well you're, you know, you, you, you can do things, but uh, the, listen, sometimes we talk too fast. Fill the man's stomach first before you bring a request, before you want to talk about what happened to you today, before you want to vent, fill his stomach, okay? It was strategy. She used that strategy, amen? And as a result of it, what happened? He heard her request and he gave her the, the authority that she needed to cause that law, even though it was irreversible, to put another law in place that could overthrow that particular war. So ask God for strategy. Don't always be uh, talking, 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 talking all the time. Don't always be trying to uh, uh, tell your husband, do this, do that, do the other thing. Don't be always trying to make your pastor go a certain direction. That is not, lose your strategy. As a warring woman, you have to use strategy. Warfare demands strategy. And it doesn't always work the same way all the time. Just because something worked yesterday doesn't mean it would, it would work today. That's one of the reasons why David would always ask the Lord, should I go up and follow them or should I stay here? And so many times God said, go up, go up, go up. He might have presumed, well, this time I'm just going to go up because God is always telling me to go up. But no, that time God said, don't do that. Don't go. 
So sometimes we have, we have to listen to the strategy of the Lord when we have a battle that we're facing, whether it's with our children, whether it's with our, our, our spouses, whether it's in our, our, on our jobs, we have to learn to hear God as to what is the strategy for this particular battle because every battle is not the same. And just because it worked one time, it doesn't mean to say that it's going to work another time. We have the prostitute Rahab. She acted like a double agent. She, hid, she hid the spies, amen, and, and she protected them, and she won a place in the hallmark of faith. In, uh, uh, and she became uh, in the lineage of the Messiah. So there's hope for every one of us. Not that we bring in another Messiah, but God has placed us in his lineage. It doesn't matter what our background was. It doesn't matter where we came from, what we did in the past. And that's what so many women have to understand. If you don't leave your past behind, it's going to keep you in bondage all your life. You've got to leave the past behind. You've got to let go of issues. You've got to stop bleeding on people all the time about what happened to you and who did you what. Stop bleeding on them. Because if you, you, if you are a wounded soldier, all they're going to do is take you out of the battle. They don't keep any wounded soldiers in battle. From the time they're wounded, they drag them out of the battle. Unless they leave them to die. <laughs> so, so, so all of this uh, shows us, you know, that, that God places us in strategic places. We have uh, the story of um, uh, Moses, the deliverer, okay? And, and who, who, who God used? God used his mother to preserve his life, and God used the very daughter of Pharaoh, to bring him into the palace itself. And, and, and uh, when that same Pharaoh had ordered the assassination of all the male children, and yet right in the midst of the palace, there comes the deliverer. Jochebed was his mother, and Pharaoh's daughter raised him in all of the learning of Pharaoh. I'm telling you, when you listen to God, when you, you realize, listen, I'm in this war, and I'm in this war to win, God will cause you to get into the very palace of the people that are against you, the people that have said, you can't do it, the people that have said, you don't qualify, and if he can't get you there, he'll get your children there. He'll get your grandchildren there because God is going to win no matter what. So we just have to make ourselves available. You know, all jo Jochebed had was maybe uh, uh, three or four years with her son, but she instilled in him so much that when he grew up, he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, and he refused, uh, he chose affliction rather than the pleasures of sin for a season. It doesn't matter how little time you have with your children. Maybe your husband took the children. You, have, you, you don't have full custody over them. But whatever time you have, you can instill such faith, such love, such a, a, a word in them that when they grow up, they will refuse to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. And they will be those that would lead their people out of, uh, out of trouble. So all these stories go to show us that there is no situation or circumstance that are exempt from the influence of a woman. Every one of us has strategically been placed by God in one or more of the seven mountains of influence that we've been hearing about. Whether it's family, whether it's spirituality or church, whether it's business, which is economy and finance, politics, education, media, the arts, we have been placed strategically where we are. But we have to realize that we have been placed there to be a voice. 
We've been placed there to use the authority God has given us to pull down strongholds, cast down imaginations, you know, uh, 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 use our influence to speak over that. Instead of complaining about the, the atmosphere in your, on your job, why don't you go there in the morning and speak a new atmosphere into that job? Get to work a little earlier than the rest of them and walk around like a crazy person and say, in the name of Jesus, I speak peace into this office in the name of Jesus I cast down every spirit of antichrist and you just use your authority there and if you have a little oil you could go and touch their just with it <laughs> and they say well what is somebody comes and say oh, what is this greasy thing there oh somebody must have um, somebody must have buttered their bread and forgot to clean it off good morning the kings are here Royalty has come to sit next to royalty. <laughs> Amen. So, 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 um, you see, you all distracted me now. <laughs> okay, so we complain about some stuff and we get sucked into battles that are of no eternal consequence. And we underestimate the power of our influence. Some of us have been afraid to even venture into some of those areas that I mentioned there. Some of, some of you are afraid to go into politics. Some of you are afraid, as if we feel that, you know, that's a dirty place. It might be a dirty place, but we are clean people. Amen? Amen? So, uh, so we have been... Uh, uh, so we don't, want to, we don't want to get out of our comfort zone we, uh, and we don't want to get out of our familiar cozy spot on the shore where we are content to get our toes wet but are afraid to swim. Yeah. Now I know I'm preaching to the choir because, um, uh, well I wouldn't say I'm afraid to swim. I don't like to swim where I can't touch the ground. <laughs> It's not that I'm afraid to swim. I can swim. I, I promise you people, I did a swimming class, okay? <laughs> and I can swim. But I just like to know that, you know, if I stop swimming, I'm going to touch the bottom. How many of you are like me? You need to overcome that fear. In Jesus' name. If you can fly in the air, you can certainly swim in water. But it is a war. <laughs> we are, uh, this, uh, heaven is waiting for us to step up and step out into something that is bigger than us. And any one of us, whether we want to fight or not, there is a war raging around us. It's a spiritual battle. It's a culture war. And it's a war that wants to pressure us to call evil good and good evil. But Isaiah 5, 20 to 21 says, Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe to those who are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. It is a war, people, that is trying to put a gag over our mouths to keep us silent. It's a war that wants to make us oblivious and accepting to the fact that our boys and young men are voluntarily castrating themselves and our girls and young women are removing their breasts not because they are cancerous, but because they want to be boys and men. It's a war where entire neighborhoods, cities, and islands are in the hands of gangs and drug lords. It's a war in which the church has been sidelined to the position of spectator. We are not seen as the light of the world because the lights are now the pop stars, the movie stars, the basketball stars. They are the ones who are lighting the way for our children. And to make it worse, to make it worse, we are not seen as the salt of the earth, but social media, news media, political activists are on a vicious campaign to make us appear to be the stench of the earth. And so because of that, we are retreating and we are not talking because we don't want anybody to say we are homophobic. We don't want anybody to say that we are, you know, somehow not politically correct. 
We don't want anybody to shut us down and so on. So, uh, but it's a time for the warring woman to wake up. Yeah. Women have changed laws before in the wrong way. So how come we can't change laws again to be in the right way? It's time for us to put on our garments of war and be counted. War is a serious thing. You don't have to pick a fight. Sometimes the fight is picked for you. The people of Ukraine, they had no choice but to surrender or fight. They didn't go looking for a war, but the war came looking for them. So the devil is not concerned as to whether you want to be a part of the war or not. He has declared war on us. He is after our marriages, our children, our grandchildren, our health, our finances. He is after our leaders and he's after our followers. He doesn't care. So rejoice, you heavens and every heavenly being, but woe to the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down to you with great fury because he knows his time is? You all know that scripture then. Revelation 12, 12. He knows his time is short. So some of the things you are experiencing, don't keep asking, why is this happening to me? The devil is after us because he knows his time is short. But this is not the time to retreat. Don't do like the opossum that lies down and plays dead and hope that you would leave it alone. No, this is the time to roar. When the devil roars, you roar back at him. As you saw in the intercession, uh, in, in that little video, you know, don't, don't cower down. Don't be uh, afraid. The scripture says resist him. And he is the one that's supposed to be fleeing from you. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. So we are supposed to resist him steadfastly in the faith. And what's the faith? The faith is the word, the word, the word. We've got to know God's word. We've got to know what God is saying in this time. We've got to have the spirit of wisdom and revelation. So we know this is not God's will for me. This is not God's will for my family. Because if you believe it's God's will, you're going to accept it. But the strange thing is... And let me just go here. Some people feel, um, well, you know, it's God's will for me uh, to be sick. So why are you going to the doctor to defeat God's will? Why do you go to the doctor if it's God's will for you to be sick? Then you're going against God's will. Because the doctor might give you some medication and make you well. Amen? So we, we, we have to... You know, these are what they talk about, these strongholds in our mind that we need to cast down so that we don't fall for the lies of the enemy because many of us are not where we should be and could be because we are still living off of the words that we heard when we were young. Money doesn't grow on trees. Money is the root of all evil. If it's God's will, it will happen. If it's not God's will, it will not happen. So we live under those umbrellas that keep the showers of blessing from falling on us. Because we are still tied to some of these old, wrong theology, wrong teaching that we have adopted. There's nothing glamorous about war, people. I know my husband loves to watch war movies, but it's from the comfort of our living room and bedroom. <laughs> but we still don't know what war is. It doesn't matter how realistic the movie is. They may even show actual footage, but you can't smell the blood of the dying soldier. You can't smell the gunpowder and the carnage. So war is not glamorous. That's why I said we have to take off our, you know, all of these things. <laughs> but I was just joking, folks, because I like my weave, okay? <laughs> so I, I'm, I'm going to war with my crochet and my highlights. <laughs> Amen. 
not the high heels because somehow or the other high heels seem to be too high for me these days. So it shall be, uh, uh, okay, let me get to this. In Bible times, God instructed the priests to give ample warning to those who reported for battle. And so I'm giving you ample warning. He said, so it shall be when you are on the verge of battle, the priest shall approach and speak to the people. And you should tell them, today you are on the verge of battle. Do not let your heart faint. Do not be afraid. Do not tremble or be terrified because of them. And let me tell you sometimes, when you have a situation, sometimes you tremble and you know. But I have a, a, a saying that I've always never let the devil see you sweat. So in spite, sometimes I'm there rebuking the enemy, but my heart is racing. My hands are cold. It's okay. But open your mouth because he doesn't, he doesn't know unless you tell him. So you open your mouth and you talk as if you're not afraid. Satan, girl, you shall not have my husband. You're not having my children. In the name of Jesus, you get a, 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 a phone call that they're in an accident. In the name of Jesus, he shall live and not die. Your heart is beating. It's racing. I'm telling you, your hands are cold. And even your, your, your voice is in a tremble. But you do not let the devil know that you are afraid. So he says, do not tremble or be terrified. For the Lord your God is he who goes with you to fight for you against your enemies to save you. Then the officer shall speak to the people saying, what man is there that has built a new house and has not dedicated it? Let him go and return to his house. Lest he die in the battle and another man dedicate it. What man is there who has planted a vineyard and has not eaten of it? Let him go and return to his house Lest he die in battle and another man eat of it. What man is there who is betrothed to a woman and has not married her? Let, her go, let him go and return to his house. Lest he die in battle and another man marry her. The officer shall speak further to the people and say, What man is there who is fearful and faint-hearted? Let him go and return to his house. Lest the heart of his brethren faint like his heart. So I told you I'm, I've, I've come to recruit you. I've come to recruit you. So I'm saying if you're afraid, go home. This is boot camp here, people. If you are afraid, go home. Because we are not here to pamper you. You're going to hear some stuff that's going to make you, your head will start to feel, oh my gosh, I don't know if I, I never heard this before. Okay, this is the purpose of this conference, to equip an army of men and women who will go back to their cities, their nations, and do exploits for God our Father. We have not gathered here for the weather. We have not brought you here for the shopping, as good as it is. We have not brought you here to see Mickey Mouse because Mickey Mouse is doing a lot of wrong things right now in, in, in Florida. We have, not brought you here, we have brought you here to equip you for battle. Every speaker is going to have a piece of the artillery that you are going to need. Every speaker will be imparting not just information, but revelation. Be present. Not just in body, but with a spirit of expectation and eagerness to access everything God has for you. So know that when you, when, you, when you answer this call to arms, it's going to affect these areas of your life. Physically, it will cost you something. Sometimes family and friends, when you go back and you try to tell them what you learned, they will want to know where you got that from. Who do you think you are? Family and friends, career sometimes, your comfort, your time, your money, and for some, even their lives. Because I'll tell you, and, and let me just go back to the money. One of the ways we war is through our finances. Yes, and this is an area that a lot of people are afraid to war with. Because it's like, if I do this, what's going to happen after that, but you've, you're going to have to war with your finances. 
Psychologically, it will e require you to lay down some traditions, mindsets, your thoughts, your ways of doing things, and your plans. Spiritually, you can no longer survive as babies. As immature believers, as I mentioned before, those that are bleeding on others every time you get offended, walking around with pieces of the arrows that have shot at you in the past, you've got to get tough. The Bible says fight the good fight of faith. It is a good fight, but it is a fight. So Gideon started off with 32,000. And the very moment he said, if any of you are afraid, go home. <laughs> it boiled down to 10,000. So 22,000 of that army, they were afraid. We don't have 32,000 here, so we can't afford for too many of you to go home. Okay? But 22,000 of them went home. And then God said, it's still not enough. God said, I'm going to test them. God says, let them go down to the water and drink. And everyone that bends down to drink the water like this, take them out. They're not ready. Because the enemy could be right over there, but they're so filling their bodies with water. They're so looking after the flesh that they're going to end up making us lose this battle. He said, but watch for those who are watchful. They don't go, I'm not going down because I don't want to have anybody have to tell me, come, let me help you get up, okay? <laughs> so just imagine I'm down, okay? Any case, people, I'm gymming right now. I just want you all to know. And I'm lifting weights and stuff like that. So, <laughs> so any case, he said, go down. Watch those who are just going to put, take up the water and lap. They are, they are watchful. They are on the lookout. Only 300 passed that battle, passed that, that test. Only 300, but God told him, with these 300, we're going to win. We're going to win. We're going to win. And I tell you, folks, out of all of you who are here, God is going to raise up a remnant. I want you to say, I am one of them. Because I don't want to be left behind. I don't want to be left out of this battle. Because the thing is, whether you want to fight or not, you're in it. So if you don't learn to fight, you're going to die. I am one of them. I want you to say I'm salt. I am light. I am a woman warrior. Bring it on. Bring it on. In Jesus' name. Amen.